Hey guys, Tom here with Back Garden Bushcraft. Really excited. It's uh, the weekend of the first course I'm running here at Badgels Wood, and this is my course area. You saw it when it was still being built, and they've done a fantastic job. We've got the parachute up above us, we've got these lovely benches, fire pit dug with sand all around it. It's absolutely beautiful. And even better, the bluebells are out, the sweet chestnut coppice is just looking gorgeous. And it's an absolutely beautiful weekend. So couldn't ask for more really. I've got a couple of clients coming to learn uh, carving tomorrow and it's going to be absolutely awesome. Can't wait to share my love for carving, my, uh, my real uh, sort of passion for making things from wood and uh, share some skills. It's going to be a really good weekend. I'm going to film mainly what I'm doing around camp to get ready for the course, my cooking, my meals, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, just see how it goes really. But I'm super excited. It's going to be an awesome course brought loads of my teaching kit, my axes, my carving knives, um, some spoons I've carved and yeah it's just going to be a brilliant celebration of Sloyd and woodworking so um, really excited to get started. I'm going to set my tarp up, get my camp sort of squared away, organise my, my course kit and uh, things like the water, the jerry cans, um, the food, that sort of thing and just get this place ready to run this course. Anyway, hope you'll love this video and uh, stay tuned. Incredibly warm today. Really racked up a thirst. Gone off and looked for some green wood. I um, think I've found a decent bit. I'm gonna cut it and see in a minute. Uh, just see how much moisture's in it. Um, but yeah, I needed a drink. Got my hammock up just next to the, the uh, nice parachute shelter we've got there. And um, that way I'm not too far from the course area. Um, I picked a spot with no bluebells. Uh, it's just brambles here. Um, and I've been careful not to trample any br any bluebells, um, only the uh, the brambles in this one particular 
three meter by three meter square spot. Um, I actually followed a, an already sort of trampled bit of a game trail um, so that I was not causing any damage to the environment around here because um, it's a beautiful area and um, I want to keep it that way. Um, really enjoying this bottle holder that I picked up off Dave Fryers. Um, really high quality and I've got my clean canteen with a titanium nesting cup in there um, for anyone who's interested what I'm carrying as a water bottle for this.
Well guys, dinner is served. I've got a serrano ham, tarragon, asparagus, broccoli and sweet potato pasta in a creamy sauce um, and accompanying it with a Thatcher's hazy cider. So it's going to be really nice. Um, just sort of played around with the recipe. Um, it's one I've cooked at home but slightly differently. Just basically chucked the kitchen sink in there and it, it should be really nice. Um, seasoned with salt and pepper and obviously tarragon so it's going to have some flavour. Um, so yeah I'm going to get this down me. It was a really fun thing to cook at camp. Um, allowed me to get my new billy can out and, and use that to boil the pasta in. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to get stuck in and taste this. So um, yeah, I'm gonna set the camera up, try a bit on camera, and then uh, leave you guys while I eat this. Um, because yeah, it's making me hungry, the smell of it. Cheers guys, I'm on a bit of a cider kick at the moment. I um, used to not be able to drink apple juice. Um, so I always avoided cider, but um, went to a sort of craft cider place in Sussex, um, Cowfold Cider, and uh, risked it. And uh, I haven't looked back, I'm, I'm really enjoying cider at the moment. And yeah, it's really nice to know that I can uh, drink it with no ill effects, so um, this is good. I'm going to tuck into this uh, lovely pasta that I've made. I love asparagus, I love serrano ham, um, and yeah, the creamy sauce should be nice. So let's have a go. Mm. That's lovely. You can really taste the tarragon. And it, nice, it offsets the creamy richness of that sauce really nicely. Mm. Smoky because of the um, slightly charred sweet potato. This is good. Well, I'm going to enjoy this and uh, I'll bring you guys back in a little while. Well guys, I want to get a nice good long sleep so I'm fresh and ready to uh, teach tomorrow so I'm going to go and get some nice rest. Um, I've got my hammock set up over there, had a lovely pasta dish for dinner, feeling nice and full and yeah really excited for tomorrow. I can't wait to get stuck in and start carving some stuff with, uh, with the clients. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to cook up a bit of breakfast beforehand and things like that so yeah uh, looking forward to getting in my sleeping bag, swinging my hammock and yeah, have a good night's sleep and be fresh and ready uh, to smash it in the morning. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video so far. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, good morning. I slept really well. It's about seven o'clock now. I'm about to start the fire. I've got a little bit of kindling I just need to split down and then use some fat wood just to get this fire going. I want the fire to be burning for a couple of hours before the clients arrive. So we've got a nice bed of embers, get the kettle on and have that going throughout the day. Um, it actually rained pretty heavily for a few hours in the night, despite the weather being lovely yesterday. Um, but it looks like it's going to be another nice day today. Um, hopefully it will dry out my tarp and things today um, if the sun comes back out. But yeah, let's get this fire going, let's get some breakfast on and get a coffee in me. Um, which, uh, as you guys know, is uh, <laughs> the one thing that makes me human in the morning. I need my cup of coffee, um, otherwise I'm sort of like a half asleep uh, troll, just sort of walking around the woods. So let's get a coffee on, get some bacon in us, and uh, yeah, really looking forward today. As I said, I've been talking about it for so long on my channel, and um, it's something I've been sort of dreaming about doing and wanting to do for so long. Um, so. For me to actually run my first solo course here um, is a really big deal for me and it's something that I, I don't take for granted. I feel really privileged to be able to do that in such a beautiful spot. Um, so yeah, it's fantastic.
Well guys, there's my breakfast. A hearty, hearty bacon sarnie. I'm gonna get this down me, I'm gonna enjoy it. Nordic bacon, Polish bacon. Um, as I said before, it's one of my favorite things now to take in the woods after Liam showed me it. So yeah, um, I'm gonna enjoy this. Well guys, everything's all ready now. Um, still a little bit of time until I'm due to start, so just hanging around waiting for the clients now. Um, really excited about this. I've wanted to share my love for carving for so long, so to finally be doing it in such a beautiful woodland is such a privilege. Um, but yeah, I can't wait. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. Um, everything's set up, so I know you've seen most of it already, but I just thought I'd take you around one last time uh, before I have to put the camera away for a little while while I'm teaching. Um, bring you back later in the day and let you know how it's going um, but for now let me just show you around and I brought uh, an array of my carvings here as you can see a few that have been coal roast um, and just yeah a few just that I've worked on recently and a few older ones that you might have seen a while back on my Instagram um, but yeah it's looking great there's loads of seating my tarp's just tucked away in the back there. Nice fire there. Big bed of embers. And yeah, that's me. It's going to be awesome. So I will speak to you guys later and let you know how it goes. Um, yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> and speak to you guys in a bit. carving then. This is the bit where I'm going to be most on edge mm -hmm. and I'll be pleased when it's done because <laughs> until you get used to an axe you, you're going to be a bit wary of it. So these bits of extra wood we've cut might come in useful actually just to learn a few basic cuts. So I'm going to be off to the side. I'm going to leave a decent gap between my body and the stump. That way if the axe was to swing through, there's enough room for the axe to swing past me and not cause me any harm. Am I gonna grab it like this? I would quite like to go home with five digits on each hand. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just tuck my hand around the back of the wood. Effectively now I've got a wooden shield, haven't I? Do this all day, it's great. Um, same power every time, not going to be like, you know, just it's, it's going to be like a guillotine, just coming down, okay? So put a stop cut in, work your way up to halfway, remove your material up to the stop cuts, tilting the piece of wood to decide the depth of the cut, turn it round. Now I'm doing them very quickly after each other. And that's just because I use an ax all the time. What I would rather you guys did today was think about every hit that you make. Um, so make your hit, stop and have a look. Make your next hit, stop and have a look. Make your next hit, okay? Don't get blase with it. So just make your hit, make your next hit. The one danger I have found with this is say I get a piece of wood like this this stump's still green so they're a bit slippery anyway but if I get a bit of wood like that and it gets underneath my piece of wood 
a piece of wood could go like that. Mm. What you want to do is always be aware, every time you bring the axe down, you need to be thinking, is my, wood is my piece of wood secure? Um, and you want to only bring the axe down if you're sure that you're not going to have done this, because you don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, pretty straightforward, just make sure that you know where the axe is going, bring it up and down really, like, not too hard, just be mm -hmm. chill with it, and make some stop cuts to make removing material easier. around on one side obviously we've used our knives a lot today and they don't stay sharp forever and as we know a blunt tool is a dangerous tool uh, we want a sharp a nice and sharp tool that requires little effort uh, for carving through wood if I'm having to uh, to get through a piece of small wood probably time for me to sharpen my knife so when I'm in the field and I'm out for a long time, this is basically my sharpening kit. And I'll use this for maintaining my knives. This is a little sharpener. It's not very big at all, but it's got a coarser side and a fine side. And it's really easy to use. I would normally rest it on my strop. I would uh, put my knife on the, on the stone. Can you see there, there's a gap. That would mean I was sharpening at the wrong angle. What I want to do is press it so there's no gap between the bevel and the stone. So you can't see any light. And then basically what I'm just going to do is just draw it along the length of the stone. Just do the same number on each side. And basically all that's going to do is just take an even amount of material off. Can you see there, if I have it like that, it's the wrong angle, there's a gap. If I have it like that, it's good. If I do that, I'm going too steeply and I'm going to end up dulling it. So, just want to do this a number of times each way. Does it make a noticeable difference? It does. Yeah. 
Uh, now this stone actually can be used without water, um, whereas a lot of stones you'll find are, are, wa are water stones, where you have to actually just put soak them in water for a little while first before you use them. But this one's quite nice because I don't have to do that, and I'm lazy. This one's fairly expensive, but you can get a decent quality one called a, a DC4, which is £15 again. Not too much, and it's, it's all you need really. And you can use an old leather belt instead of the nice strop I've got there. So I'll do that for a little while. Then I go to a really fine stone. I wouldn't bring this with me when I was camping. I'd normally just have this to, at home um, just for getting it really sharp. But again, I'm just going to find my angle and basically slice across the stone, keeping that bevel nice the whole way. Um, and what we want to do really is take off a tiny bit of metal. Here's a question, but yeah. over like a lot of years, would you ever like end up wearing a knife? Yes, away? yeah, no, absolutely. People that use really coarse sharpeners basically are taking a bit of their knife off every time they sharpen it. Mm. So I tend to not have to sharpen too often because I, I maintain my knife by stropping. So this is just a little bit of leather on a board. You can use a leather belt and put it around a door frame and just strop on that, it works fine. Uh, but basically with this, instead of cutting into the stone like we were doing, we're pulling the, the knife away because otherwise we'll cut the strop. Um, and this really goes a long way into honing your knife and making it sharp. So I'm just going to do this, pushing down fairly hard into the, the leather um, and it, it, it will slightly convex over the bevel but it makes that edge a lot stronger and a lot sharper basically it's removing the tiny mic if you were to look at this under a microscope it will look a bit like a saw we're making those saw teeth as small as we possibly can under a microscope so that that knife is as clean as possible when it goes through wood <laughs> okay. Lovely. Well guys, that was a really successful day, a really satisfying day. Um, the clients were a really lovely couple, uh, really nice people and yeah, got on really well with them. Um, it was lovely to share my sort of passion for carving and they seem to have a really lovely time. Uh, they both went away wanting to have had even longer out here. Um, they both finished a spoon um, to the point where they will want to go away and sand it. But, um, but yeah, they did fantastically. They both took on some really advanced designs um, and really, really did well. Um, they became really confident with their axe work. Um, they did everything really safely. Um, yeah, and they were just really, really attentive and, and listened and, and learned a lot. So it was a fantastic day. Um, I couldn't have asked for, for two better clients, really, um, for, the, for the first little course I'm running um, myself. Um, and yeah, it was just a great day. Um, lots of axe work for me, so they were so keen to, to carry on with um, practicing and stuff. I actually sent them away with a, a bag full of um, axed out blanks um, for them to, to practice their craft uh, and, and hone their skills. But yeah, fantastic day, couldn't have asked for a better one. So uh, I just am going to relax now, it's been a, a full on day, I've been up since pretty early uh, getting everything ready and um, a full on day of teaching. Um, so I'm going to chill out by the fire, I've got some steak to cook, um, I've got some cider as well to enjoy and obviously my pipe. Um, got some lovely American tobaccos uh, which I, I've got so I'm looking forward to trying a bit of that um, and yeah I'm just uh, feeling really good I'm I'm feeling really happy and positive uh, that that went well and uh, it was what I wanted it to be so um, yeah it, it's great because I've been drawing lesson plans and risk assessments and stuff to like for, for months uh, to make sure that this can be as good as it can be and um, it was great and we, we covered even things that I didn't think we would cover so we covered um, safe use of an axe for splitting firewood because they were keen to put some some more firewood on the on the on the um, 
on the fire and they wanted to learn how to do that with an axe safely. So we covered safe methods of splitting with an axe, we covered how to use a fro, um, we covered knife sharpening and maintenance, we covered um, different options for finishing your spoon, different oils, different um, different methods, so sanded versus non-sanded. We covered so, so much. So um, for just a single day course, uh, I think I think I covered everything I wanted to and more. So, yeah, I'm really stoked, really pleased it went well. Uh, big thanks to those two for for being such great clients, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of the evening of just relaxing and chilling out. It's beautiful woodland. Rained a bit during the day, but that's no problem. Um, awesome. Switch on relax mode. So that was pretty cool. Um, I was just cooking my steak and I'd just taken it off to rest and I was about to get the broccoli and asparagus on um, when a, a lady and her 10 year old son uh, wandered over uh, to chat to me about the spoon carving workshops because she'd, she'd read that they were on um, and uh, she was gutted that they'd missed it actually. Um, so hopefully I'll see her and her son on a future course. Um, but he, he'd just bought himself a fire steel uh, from the little shop that, that we've got here at Badgels Wood. Um, so to make up for him missing the, the spoon carving day, I gave him a little impromptu lesson um, on how to use a fire steel because they were a bit confused by the um, black coating that comes on a new fire steel. Uh, so I explained how you have to get it off and get to the silver layer before it will throw nice sparks. So I gave him a little lesson on how to use the fire steel, how to process birch bark, and um, showed him how to use birch bark for fire lighting. So sent him off with a little um, bundle of birch bark from my personal supplies, and uh, he's gonna go and play with his, uh, his fire steel. Um, budding little Ray Mears guy, so pretty cool. Also showed him the difference between traditional flint and steel and modern uh, ferrocerium rods, um, and demonstrated the difference in the color of the sparks and things like that, so really nice to uh, see the sort of next next generation of, of bushcrafters really uh, getting stuck in and learning some skills young um, so yeah encouraging uh, my steak's been resting for like 10 minutes um, I've got the broccoli and asparagus on should be a really nice dinner um, can't beat steak in the woods and I'm a huge fan of tender stem broccoli and even bigger fan of uh, asparagus so it should be a lovely dinner I'm going to tidy up uh, the few bits I got out to, to, um, to show them um, while this is cooking and I'll bring you guys back in a minute. Well guys, dinner is served. We've got steak, broccoli and asparagus cooked in extra virgin olive oil with some salt and pepper. Looks absolutely delicious, I'm starving, haven't eaten enough today. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to tucking into this. Um, I'll give you a different perspective so you can see it from above or something else, some different angle and then I'm going to just start munching because I'm starved. Cheers guys, I'm on the uh, Thatcher's Hazy Cider again. Um, Really cheap, but really nice. Um, and then I've got my steak, my asparagus, my broccoli. Cheers to a good day. Oh, it's good. So fruity.
a su buena. Well, I'm not going to force you to sit and watch me eat my whole way through this meal. Um, so I will bring you back a little bit later. Well, I'm pretty tired now, so I'm thinking about getting myself a hot drink. Uh, I've got the kettle boiling and uh, yeah, I've got some chai latte powder. So I'm just going to have one of those and then get my sleeping bag and call it good for the day. Um, it's been a fantastic one. I really enjoyed myself. Um, so I guess that just leaves me to say goodnight to you guys and uh, I'll bring you back in the morning uh, where we've got more bacon and uh, just a, a nice relaxing morning in the woods before I head back to reality. Hope you enjoyed seeing the course today and uh, yeah, if you are interested, uh, do think about booking on and, and coming and learning the course. We covered so much um, and went into real lots of detail. So. Yeah, there's, there's loads that people can learn from it and I, I think it's a really, really good course and I'm very proud of it. So, yeah, do check it out at Badger's Wood website. Um, I'll put the link in the description. See you guys in the morning. Sleep well. Well, morning guys um, absolutely gorgeous night's sleep I was just out like a light um, it was as if someone had removed my batteries like I was just like dead um, so yeah I slept all the way through literally I got to bed about I don't know 11 and I have slept through till now which is 9 30 um, without any disturbance at all <laughs> Um, and yeah, it was a really, really nice sleep, um, but the weather this morning is gorgeous, like the sun's out, the birds are singing, um, yeah, <laughs> it's an ideal day, um, to be out in the woods and, uh, loving being in the hammock, um, I'm just, uh, sort of sitting and looking at the woods around me and, um, I've got the thought of bacon, i got eggs, um, coffee, um, and yeah, I've not got any agenda today really, so um, I'm just going to chill out really, um, film breakfast, um, I think I might do sort of a one match fire type thing with some feather sticks to get the fire going this morning, um, cook my bacon, cook my eggs, um, have a pipe, chill out, go for a little wander probably. It's going to be a good day. I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Um, right. I probably should get up because um, I know if I was to lie here for much longer, I'd probably fall back to sleep. And uh, before I know it, it'd be lunchtime. Um, <laughs> so let's get up and at him. And uh, I'll bring you guys back once I'm up. <laughs>
Well, I've cooked myself a bacon and egg sandwich, got myself a coffee, it's going to be good. Don't know how I'm going to eat this though, it's huge. Mm. Well guys, as you know, I really enjoy a pipe every now and then, and especially when I'm camping. And it's uh, actually a hobby that I've become really interested in. Uh, I spend a lot of time researching and learning about the different leaves and varietals and uh, pipe makers and carvers and things like that. Um, and I was really lucky eh, to get my hands on some American tobaccos. Um, so I filled up my um, collection with uh, about 12 different blends from America. And this is one, this is a Cornell and Dill blend called Eight State Burley. And it's got 2014 Burleys, 2005 Orientals, 2019 Bright Virginias and 2018 Red Virginias. So this is a small batch release. Um, and yeah, it's a really nice tobacco. I'm really enjoying it. Um, you saw earlier in the video that I was enjoying Country Squire uh, 50th Anniversary, which is a Virginia Perique blend and that is an amazing tobacco, I really enjoy it. 
um, and the Country Squire guys are just awesome. Um, so I really like supporting them. They have a great podcast if you are a pipe smoker. Um, I'm sure you know about Country Squire Radio, but if you don't, do go and listen to it. I'm smoking my Missouri Meerschaum um, Cobbit pipe. This is a uh, sort of Hobbit-inspired corncob pipe, um, like a mini church warden. Um, and yeah, it's a really nice pipe. Smokes clean, smokes nice, uh, gives you good flavor. So yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this. This lighter as well, I won in a giveaway on Instagram uh, from a maker called Ruetz Pipes. Um, I think he's in Tyrol in Austria. And yeah, he makes some beautiful pipes. I'd love to one day get my hands on one of those. I won this awesome custom lighter, custom Zippo, um, which has been patinaed and is just awesome. So I'm gonna enjoy this with my custom lighter, my American tobacco. And yeah, just sit and chill in the bluebells. I've picked a spot here where there aren't any bluebells under me. I'm in like a little clearing, uh, but I've got bluebells all around me. So it's a beautiful place to just have a sit. Um, this bowl will last for about 40 minutes. So I'll just sit here and enjoy this. Just drinking in the woods, basically. Well guys, it's been an awesome camp. Really enjoyed running my course. Um, really glad it went well. And my area is just awesome. It looks so cool. Beautiful woodland, um, awesome course. Just really had the best time. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm running out of battery and footage. So I'm actually gonna end it here. Please stay tuned for my next video and stay safe. Get out in the woods, learn some skills and uh, enjoy yourselves. Cheers guys.